Welcome back to another 12 Guitars with Rob Dan. I am absolutely delighted to have this young man standing next to us. This is Ross Reed. Um, we've had the pleasure of his company at a number of the bus jams that we've been doing. And uh, we've been trying to get Ross in here to do this rig rundown for about the last six months, and certainly since just before the lockdown for COVID. So the fact that we've managed to get him in is brilliant. Uh, a real talent, and I'm dying to get in amongst uh, how he sets his rig up and the guitars and the amps and everything that he uses. So without further ado, Ross, tell me about that amazing Les Paul that you're holding right now. Okay. This is a 2019 Les Paul Standard 50 spec. Um, it's basically entirely stock, except for this here. I've got a string butler on yeah, here. Okay. Um, just, what does that do? It's just to help with the improve the tuning stability. Right, okay. Because uh, with headstocks, they have an angle back. Uh, they have an angle back, back headstock. Yep. So that when you run your strings through and when it reaches the nut, they dive off and back. Mm -hmm. So this helps them run straight through, like it yeah, yeah, so a telecaster or a strap. So it massively improved tuning stability. Cool. The best thing. I think I might be investing in one of those anytime soon. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So standard stock Les Pauls. So just just talk me through the guitar yeah. and how you um, get it set up and how you get some of the tones. I've, I've, I've barely done anything to the setup because uh, the action and everything was already great. The only thing I really did was I uh, lowered the uh, the neck pickup mm -hmm. slightly just to, it, when you lower it, it brings up a little bit. Yeah. So I just lowered that and then uh, I just, I love messing about with the, with the tone, the the tone of volume. It's, it's one of those, finally work now. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. one of those guitars where if you if you actually have the courage to play with your volume and your tone, the, the amount of uh, different tonalities you can get out of a, a Les Paul is insane. Yeah. So, uh, cool. So, well, give us some tones then. Let's uh, let's some noise. Uh, maybe look nice and clean to start with, and then we'll okay. take it through. Uh, clean, son, uh, clean tones. I usually start about two and a half in the volume. Uh, on the bridge pickup, I have um, the tone usually about six, and then on the neck about ten. Yeah. So we'll play the neck pickup. <laughs> how you use your volume control on a Les Paul from clean through to really really filthy and uh, it just sounds immense really creamy it's great so show me the bridge
you that we were just before we started recording us you were doing a, it was a Led Zeppelin number where you had your pickup set so the, the, the neck was really clean and yeah. then you went into that crunch and that for me is the quintessential Les Paul thing it's what Les Pauls do so well so give us a quick sample of that first so it's just straight from the guitar mm -hmm. into the Catlin Bread Octopussy which is my octave fuzz and then that goes into the Boss TU3 and then through into the Wobbler Terminus Deluxe and that mm -hmm. goes into the front end of the amp. Yeah. Then uh, in the effects loop I go from the Boss Wazacraft Chorus then to the MXR Carbon Copy Deluxe, yep. to the Boss RV6, which is for all the reverb stuff, yep. then to the MXR Custom Audio Electronics Boost Line Driver, which is just a, a solo boost, and yep. to the Ditto Looper, and then back into the amp. And is that quite a clean boost then? It's just a straight boost the signal, it doesn't actually just, colour the tone? It's just a straight clean boost where. So again, for, for, for students, basically, it's like a, an electronic gizmo that takes a signal from the guitar and just increases the volume, but without colouring it in any way, so it doesn't add any EQ, like bass, middle, treble, or anything. It just takes that, pushes the amp a little bit harder. Although, to be fair, the way I've got it set right now is very, very small, uh, very, very little amount mm. that it's boosting, but the way I've got the amp set is that uh, I'm really pushing the, the power valves, the, yep. the power amp section, so when I do add that, it does add a little bit of gain in compression. All oh, right. Okay. Cool. So just ever so slightly. Just, a, just a touch. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And talk to me about the uh, the the, the octopus because I've always wanted to get one and uh, yeah. never managed to lay my hands By on far one. And it's uh, the best fuzz. Just a great pedal, isn't it? Because I've searched for so many to, uh, trying to find the perfect fuzz. Yes. Yeah. Was that? So I've got the the neck pick up on uh -huh. three. Uh -huh. Turn that on. You get some really uh, weird sounds with it. <laughs> And then if I put that like on the bridge pickup, yeah. uh, partnered with the overdrive, yeah. it is absolutely insane. <laughs> Gig with one pedal and one pedal only, which one would it be? 
Oh, as a def- top definitely <laughs> uh, the Turner's Deluxe. Yeah. Because um, the way I have uh, my amp set, mm-hmm. uh, it's quite scooped because it, uh, I kind of like that kind of stratty, kind of almost uh, kind of Stevie Ray Vaughan esque. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Deluxe on, yeah. I got it so, um, the, the, the gain uh, isn't so high, mm-hmm. and then, but the level is really high, uh, kind of like the way I run a tube screamer, because yeah. ultimately the Thomas Deluxe is basically a, a clone clone, but with a three band EQ that's extremely powerful, mm-hmm. so you can totally shape your tone, yeah. so I've got the treble just at noon because I like quite a dark tone, um, bass cut a lot and moods bis- the, 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 the mids boosted some. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting because when, when I mean obviously we've we just shot my rig run down and the, the two pedals that I couldn't live without and if I have to take two would be obviously my tuner because it's the most important but directly after that would be my cronk home mm-hmm. uh, because with that I can pretty much get any amp that's given to me and make it sound the way I need it to sound. Mm-hmm. The one after that would be my uh, my EQ pedal but um, definitely the, it's, there's something about a clone clone that just Oh, yeah. I mean, not that you could actually afford a clone these yeah. days, but um, yeah, any any good clone clone will do that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Is there anything else you think is worth maybe mentioning? Uh, talk to me a little bit about you. You've got a looper on. I didn't actually bring my yeah. looper with me, so so sh- show us how the looper works. Um, to be honest, I'm not even entirely sure. I just, <laughs> I just, I just uh, yeah, I don't want to record, but not that much. <laughs> turn the amp up louder to get uh, some uh, for, uh, distortion from the, from the power amp but then also it gives the, the whoever's uh, doing uh, the PA so like the sound engineer he can make up the amp from here and it gives him more control because the amp isn't totally blasting the front audience in yeah. the face where it just punch back for me yeah. so that's why I've, I've, I've got the volume on this set extremely high but I'm only running this at one watt in here it would be too loud otherwise yeah no. Yeah, it's amazing that makes it mixed up. And I know you've got an open back amp as well, and yeah. I, I have mixed it feelings quite often. So my uh, Jared James Nickel amp has the ability to take half the back off, and I quite often leave it on because it gives you that much tighter bottom end, which when you're playing with a big rock band like I do, with keys and all of that, you need to be able to cut through, but you do lose a lot of the definition, I think, or definition is the wrong word, a lot of the warmth of particularly something like a Les Paul that you would normally get. So I'm actually going to try that next time I'm around and just take the back off it, turn my, my uh, cab around and see if that works. Yeah, well, there was no particular reason that I actually uh, 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 was considering having an open back or a closed back. It was just, 
I really wanted the PPC 212V from Orange because of the, the speakers that are at. Aye. Celestian cream back neos, so uh, cream backs to me sound the best, but because they're the uh, cream back neos, it means the cab is extremely light in comparison mm. to a, a big Anarcho speaker. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You, and there's, I, I'll never need any bigger than that for no. a good few years anyway. No, well, unless you're actually playing the stadiums, which yeah. let's hope it won't be too far away. No, it's just I'm a, I'm a huge uh, cream back fan, but my personal favourite has always been a green back, and it's really interesting. And again, for all of the students out there, there's no right or wrong, as we always say. It's simply what do you prefer as the musician? What gives you the ability to express what you need to express? Um, and so it's really interesting. I love the sound that's coming off of that, but it's not what I would want to have coming out of my speakers when I'm playing. Um, so it's just it's it's really interesting when you start talking to fellow guitarists why they do what they do and what why they use what they use. Uh, and it's all about that inner voice. It's all about your, how do you get across the emotions you want to sing? Yeah, and, uh, and uh, although uh, quickly going back to the pedals because yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention uh, that's chorus, the boss CD. Yes, I did mention to ask about that. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> But I think there was a craft ones that they're doing now out of boss are probably as close as you're going to get to the original Wait. thing. Because the originals now are worth a fortune, unfortunately. Don't like to finish all it. Anyway, Ross, listen, mate, thank you so much for coming along and uh, sharing your, your knowledge and uh, expertise. It's been an absolute pleasure talking and more importantly listening to you. Um, you want to play us out with something? <laughs> Say rock and roll is not dead. <laughs> Cheers, Ross. Thanks very much. <laughs>